Hello guys, in this video we will talk about uh, battery systems and a little bit about what's new coming in now. Now, historically, uh, battery systems and solar has been quite a challenge for the manufacturers. There's been a lot of um, technological challenges and subpar systems. And in Australia now, there was uh, recently a report that came out uh, that um, did not give a good state of uh, the current battery systems overall. Uh, they compared many battery systems and especially the systems that uses independent uh, batteries, meaning not integrated systems. They found uh, quite a few um, errors and problems. And there, historically, there's also been quite a few recalls. Um, batteries that don't function properly and um, really expire way too fast. That's some of the problems uh, that have been going on. And obviously, because this is a technology that's still developing, uh, different manufacturers have been dealing with different kinds of uh, batteries. For example, Tesla have been using a battery type that they are now changing. Um, first of all, because of safety issues with the uh, kind of battery uh, that they used to use. And now they are switching to um, lithium, ferro, lithium ferrophosphate, LFP, which is the same kind of battery that uh, most uh, leading uh, companies in the solar uh, battery storage uh, uh, sector are using. And why is that? Well, there's many reasons for that. Uh, number one is safety. Number two is that it's just less prone to problems, basically. And also over time it lasts uh, much longer, longer dur durability. Uh, so LFP is the way uh, forward, at least within the next five years. If you're looking beyond five years, you're going to see a lot of different technologies that's uh, not lithium based. Uh, but uh, that's uh, a topic for another video no, uh, that's too far into the future for us to be thinking about it right now. But the interesting thing is that this, this seems to be a short-term uh, agreement that LFP batteries uh, is the way to go for sure. Uh, all the manufacturers seem to be <coughs> focusing on it. Now, if we look at the big manufacturers like Huawei, LG... Um, Alpha is also a market leader here. They they are all putting enormous amounts of uh, money and uh, investments into this area uh, because they all see it as the future. Uh, however, they have not all of them been able to find good solutions that uh, low, uh, low maintenance. Um, I'll give you examples about that. For example, the LG LG Chem uh, battery that you can put on several kinds of inverters have been prone to having a lot of problems. Um, that could also be because of the inverters that uh, people have been setting them up with. And now I'm touching upon the most important factor, how to get a good battery system for solar. Well, that's all about integration of battery technology, battery, what we call BMS, battery management systems. Uh, and that's why the integrated systems are by far the best when you look at uh, the battery storage technologies. So that means that the, the best uh, brands in this regard is uh, by far Tesla and uh, Alpha, which both have integrated systems. Now, Tesla is not in Thailand yet. Um, there is a rumor that they might come in, but short term they are not here. Uh, so we just have to handle without them. But we do have a very good alternative, and that's Alpha, who are at the forefront of integrated systems and also battery technology. We have installed many Alpha systems, and we are very happy with them, and customers too. Uh, the primary reason is the very good UPS. This has a very short switch over time, 10 to 15 milliseconds, which means that most of the time computers and TVs will stay on when you have a power outage. So that's the number one function of these systems that's so good. But there are other things too. 
and that is the low maintenance and the low fault alarm rate that you see with these systems compared to those that do not have the integrated uh, systems. So we can see here, um, this is the key feature, uh, BMS and EMS integrated. So it all comes in one in box like that, one seamless. So you, ha you do have a, a connection box here, even though it looks like it's one, one row, one integrated box. It's integrated, but there is more to it. There, there, there are cables and it's not like the batteries come together with the inverter. This is the inverter, the, this is the battery and there's cables coming from this box that's in between there so it goes it goes down here uh, but when that said it's very very good integration and the inverter is able to read through the battery management system everything going on in the battery now the major development for alpha for next year is the new version of the 10 kilowatt uh, three phase integrated uh, hybrid system so what's the big deal with this well the big deal is many things uh, we can see a few things here um, i would say the main thing is that it's uh, phase balancing and it's high volt uh, the batteries are high volt so you save uh, on the conversion makes it easier for the system to do uh, conversion between ac and dc because uh, the DC volt in the batteries is stored um, in uh, in a high volt uh, condition, so you don't need uh, the conversion. It's just much easier to handle, so that be becomes a much more efficient system, and that means it's also able to discharge uh, faster. What does that mean for a user? It just means that you can put more on the UPS. Uh, you can have. As long as you're using inverter appliances, you can have more appliances on the UPS. Still a limit. If you go over the limit, you're going to have overload, but the limit is higher than before. And also we have uh, more flexibility on how we uh, attach the solar panels. And we also have more flexibility in terms of what panels. That's what this is all about. And then we have the um, yeah, the phase balancing function. And then we have some extra prote protection. You can also oversize a lot more on this system. It, the inverter is rated at 10 kilowatt DC AC. That's the maximum it can output. But it can actually connect, I think it's 16 kilowatt. So you can oversize by a lot. And it's meant to be oversized. That's how it's meant to be installed which creates an enormous gain in value for money uh, with this new model because you can oversize so much. doesn't mean that that's the proper way of doing it all the time, but uh, certainly some, some sort of oversizing is definitely the best way to go. How much we have to look at every installation to see how much we should oversize, but oversizing is definitely easier and better and more stable with this new, new version. So that's it. I just wanted to give you an update on the, the battery and the hybrid um, sector, what it's looking like for Thailand within, you know, short term. I think Alpha is certainly with these new models are certainly looks like going to be a dominating, completely dominating in terms of what the highest quality. And uh, it's especially important when you, when you think about... Uh, hybrid systems to select the, the best even and sometimes it's not even more expensive uh, Huawei which is their hybrid systems which is technology wise not even comparable is actually more expensive so uh, in this case price and the quality is not uh, correlated in that sense so I would never recommend the Huawei unfortunately uh, but Huawei is putting a lot of money into it, uh, so uh, in a few years, yes, they will probably probably be on par with the Alpha, I'm guessing, but uh, it's going to take time. But for the big companies, there's almost no limit to the amount of money they can put into it, and they certainly see it as a 
as uh, as a good sector for growth. Okay, okay, guys, that's it for now.